close to New Year, and my wish for New Year is that I be healthy and smart. You can join me in this, and let's see how. Well, certain indoor plants can improve your cognitive ability for success in life. Knowledge is having the right answer. Intelligence is asking the right questions. Cognition is the process of thought or knowing. One can develop high personal cognitive ability like artificial super intelligence, develop software that is theoretically smarter than humans. When we play a chess game with a computer, that is what we experience. I did a talk on how to grow fresh air some years ago, and it has been seen by many people. And it was all about how do we grow fresh air using three basic plants. The plants being areca palm, mother-in-law's tongue, and money plant. Areca palm is a plant which converts CO2 into oxygen during the day, very effectively. Mother-in-law's tongue is a plant which does the same at night when it's dark. And money plant is a plant which removes TVOCs, that means volatile chemicals, but it's excellent in removing formaldehyde, which is really coming from paper, plastic, carpets, etc. What is in the air we breathe and how does it affect us? In Delhi area, ozone is a major issue and it, this is in the atmosphere and also, which is good, but on the ground level, ozone is not good because it oxidizes the lungs, it oxidizes the skin and you can get wrinkles. But what happens is, when it oxidizes your lungs, you cannot put anti-wrinkle cream on your face, which you can, but not in your lungs. So there is an issue. I'll deal with this a little later. What happens when the lungs get oxidized is that the PM2.5 and PM1s, which are in the air, really go out and get absorbed by the lungs and they get transmitted to the arteries into your bloodstream. Some of the PM2.5s get absorbed in the lungs itself. So you may have seen pictures of lungs of people from Delhi, which are dark or black, and people who are living in the hills, their lungs are clean. So there is an issue here. That's what particulate matter is. Uh, to, as a reference, human hair is about 50 microgram in diameter, microns in diameter. PM2.5 is about 1 20th of the size of uh, human hair. And PM1s are 1 50th the size. These are super fine particles or ultra fine particles, which go straight into your bloodstream. There was a study done by Rice University and Houston Fire Department. And they found that when PM2.5 is only went up by 6 microgram per meter cube. Over two days, the out-of-hospital cardiac arrest risk went up by 4.6%. Each increase of ozone of 20 ppb over one to three hours increased out-of-hospital cardiac risks with a peak of 4.4%. Now, this is a study which was done over thousands of people. Today, as we sit here, the PM 2.5s at the US Embassy in New Delhi, a green area of Chanakyapuri, is over 200 micrograms. And here we are talking about over 50, uh, six microgram increase, increasing your out of hospital cardiac arrests. So this is a serious situation. I might say that each human being, all of you here and me, are walking air purifiers. What happens is when we breathe air, this air, we breathe in the PM 2.5, the PM 2.5, and the PM 1s, and this is absorbed by the lungs or into our bloodstream. So it's a depository of PM 1 and PM 2.5. So a joke could be that if we triple the population of Delhi, 
perhaps the PM 2.5s may come down. But that's not the solution because human beings pollute a lot also. So it is an important serious issue. I'm told by my friends that, look, if you go and filter the air or put air purifiers, perhaps you're reducing the immunity. But that's not true. Because if you go and drink a glass of water, which is not good, not clean, you'll know. Next day, you'll have a problem. But with the air which you're breathing, you think that it's OK. I'm tolerating it. I'm, it's perfectly fine. What's the problem? And today, my thing to do would be to be successful and so on and so forth. And air quality is not that important for me. But it is important because it is all settling down in your veins. And you're going to get trouble sooner or later. A good indicator of elevated levels of pollutants is carbon dioxide by itself. And this was not really understood till recent research. And this also affects human cognition. Remember, the brain weighs about 20, it takes up 20% of the oxygen which we, which we breathe, but it only weighs 2% of the body weight. And hence, it is important to keep the brain supplied with oxygen. There were two recent studies done by Harvard and University of California, Berkeley. And the first study really showed that lower CO2 levels were coupled with lower and coupled with lower pollutants in the building, cognitive scores were 101% higher than in conventional buildings. Now, what does this mean? It means that if you lower the CO2 levels, provided you have good quality of air, that means the PM 2.5s are, say, under 15, then there is no then you can increase your cognitive ability by as much as 101%. Another Harvard study, they did a double-blind study, and they took people uh, in one room which was normally ventilated in Boston, and another room which was ventilated with 40 CFM of fresh air per person. And they found that when they took people from one room to the other, their cognitive abilities one, one room which was not too ventilated to a super ventilated room, the cognitive abilities increased by 61%. But if they stayed in the clean room, extra clean room, the cognitive abilities went up by 101%. So in today's generation, you'd like to see the results quickly. You want to say that I want to see the benefit to me right away. Well, this is a situation it's like a chill pill. You can have it, you can do it for yourself, and you'll see immediate results. In other words, you'll improve your cognitive abilities instantly and not have to wait for six months or eight months to show. University of California, Berkeley, also confirmed that CO2 itself may impact human cognition. Another study, which was as late as October, released on October 5th, 2016, and uh, the website for this particular study is the cockfxstudy.com. You can go and access it. It showed that people engaged in crisis response, their cognitive abilities improved by 131%. People who used information and processed information, their cognitive abilities improved by 299%. And people who are engaged in strategy, their cognitive abilities improve by 288%. So it's not something which you can ignore. You have to really seriously think. Our experience at Paharpur Business Center in Delhi, which is a lead platinum building, corroborates with the studies which have been done by Harvard and by University of California. Firstly, we're perhaps one of the most or in the category of very, very efficient uh, buildings in India where the energy consumption is low. However, so it doesn't mean that by doing all whatever we do, we increase costs. We actually reduce them. And we've been able to observe that in this particular building, which has PM 2.5s under 15 all the time and CO2 levels at less than 250 ppm over ambient, and TVOCs 
BDL, that means total volatile chemicals not testable or not below detectable levels, we find that there is a 42% probability that your blood oxygen levels go up by 1% if you hang around in the building for 8 to 10 hours, which means that the oxygen is being absorbed by people much faster, better, and that is a test which you can do. What can you do for yourself to improve your own cognitive abilities? A, install an air purifier which does not produce ozone, which has a HEPA filter, activated carbon filter, and that's where you stop. Get yourself a sensor which measures CO2 and also the PM 2.5s. Third, get a pulse oximeter to measure your blood oxygen levels. Uh, air purifier would cost you perhaps less than 30,000 rupees. A pulse oximeter will cost you maybe under 10,000 rupees. And a sensor which measures CO2 and also PM 2.5s will cost you maybe about 15,000. So the whole package is roughly about 55,000 rupees. What you need to do at the end is ventilate your room using, you're having 40 CFM of fresh air per minute for each person. And also you can reduce this by using green plums, which I spoke about. But the PM 2.5s in your room, in your bedroom, should be less than 15. And try and measure TVOCs or not use those kinds of compounds which really have VOCs so that you can actually keep them down. But with simple measures like keeping the right plants, you can improve your personal productivity, cognitive ability and wellness besides saving money like we have on energy costs. It is good for the mind as well as for the wallet. I would say, for example, Prime Minister Modi, when President Obama came here, he told him that he sleeps for three hours a day. And if he was to improve his cognitive abilities by having fresh air and also his productivity by only 15%, he would virtually not sleep at all or sleep for another three hours and further improve his productivity. So that is the kind of magic which, these, which this kind of condition of indoor air quality can do for you and also improve your performance in terms of productivity, in terms of what you do and how you do it. Knowledge followed by action leads to transformation. First you must know, then you act. And thank you for listening and I wish you all success in life. Thank you.